and good morning today is the ninth i think so i think yesterday was the eighth put on my glasses yes today is the ninth okay i don't like to wear them on camera because it reflects the light anyways April 9th, if ye do in any wise go back and cleave unto the remnant of these nations, know for a certainty that they shall be snares and traps unto you until ye perish from off this good land which the Lord your God hath given you. Joshua 23, 12-13. It is no easy thing to live among the people, befriend them, socialize with them, and yet draw a careful line between those we know and those we marry. Anciently, the Israelites were forbidden to socialize with the people of the land, but Latter-day Saints in our day are changed, are charged to live in a wor in the world and make a good, make a difference for good. We cannot accomplish that charge without becoming friends and associates with those in the world. When it comes to marriage, however, we draw a careful line. We seek to be equally yoked in faith and lifestyle to those we marry. We're off to a great start with my reading, let me tell you. All right, so today is Exodus 16, verses 19 through 36. And um, these verses, the Lord is telling Moses how to handle the, the manna. Uh, he says... Collect enough for one day, use it, eat it, that sort of thing, but don't have any left over. Don't collect more than is needful, and some of the people do, and it gets breadworms, and it stinks, and Moses is like, oh, guys, I told you. And then the Lord is like, okay, and on the Sabbath, the day before, you collect twice as much, and then there is none on, on the Sabbath. So the people collect twice as much on the day before the Sabbath. And then they're not supposed to light a fire on the Sabbath and they're not supposed to collect any manna. But then on the Sabbath day, people go out to collect the manna. And the Lord's like, when are you going to listen to me? When are you going to follow my commandments? Like, honestly. <laughs> and then, um, and then Moses commands Aaron to gather some up and put it as a testimony before the children of Israel for generations to, to say, this is how the Lord fed you. So it's in like a, an urn type thing, and it and it goes, it says before the testimony. And I think like, I think I heard that in the Ark of the Covenant, the tablets go in there, and the manna, and, and something else. And so, but they don't have the tablets yet. They don't have the Ten Commandments yet. But anyways, that's what happens in this chapter. And it just kind of, you're just kind of like, is he that frustrated with me? Like, you know, he says, do this, and they kind of do it, and he's just like, Ugh. and then he says, okay, don't do this, and they do it anyway, and he's just like, and, and like, you're like, oh my goodness, they're so dumb. Why can't they just follow the commandments? And then, you know, it's like me not having patience with, you know, coworkers all day long or like me being rude to customers because they were getting to me yesterday, you know, and it's like patience, calm, you know, when am I going to listen to him? When am I going to be humble? When am I going to love my fellow man? You know, so always take it in always. So, chapter 16, verses 19 through 36, we've got a few things here in the Ludlow, nothing in the side-by-side. -side. Um, but it's talking about verse 23 when it says they're not supposed to light a fire. And it says this verse is combined with Exodus 35, 3, to form the basis that no fire is to be lit on the Sabbath day. Thus, in many Orthodox Jewish homes, all of the food to be eaten on the Sabbath is cooked previously. Some of the ultra-Orthodox also interpret this injunction to apply to electric lights. 
the electricity that might be generated from turbines requiring fire, and the driving of automobiles which operate on the principle of internal combustion which requires a spark. Thus, in the Mia Sharim section of modern Jerusalem, no vehicular traffic is allowed on the Sabbath, which I found fascinating. There's Jews, then there's Orthodox Jews, then there's ultra-Orthodox Jews. And I suppose, like, that could be applied to LDS. You know, there's LDS, then there's, like, LDS, and then there's, like, Yankers. But anyways. Um, and then it talks about verse 29. This verse forms the basis of the Sabbath day's journey, which became the custom among Jewish people. The Bible dictionary entry indicates the rabbis, by means of a forced and unnatural interpretation of Exodus 16.29, fixed this at 2,000 cubits, being the distance between the ark and the people during the march in the wilderness. Verse 29 says that no man's supposed to leave his house. Uh, and also, according to tradition, the distance between the tabernacle and the furthest part of the camp. A Sabbath day's journey is thus about 3,000 feet or 1,000 yards. So there, it's, it's quite, I mean, you have to think, how do I, how does this apply to me? How do I do these things in my life? You know, he says, only collect this amount of manna, but some people collect more and it stinks. Don't collect manna on the Sabbath. And then some people go out to collect manna on the Sabbath. And then in the reverse, he says, okay, no man is supposed to leave his house. And then the rabbis, this isn't now in this time, but further down the road, they say, oh, you can only travel this far on the Sabbath and that's it. You know, it's, it's taking the small stuff like this and, you know, making it, what is it, the letter of the law or the spirit of the law type thing, where it's like, the Lord says you can't leave your house. Therefore, you know, the rabbi say you can only travel 3,000 feet, which is kind of ridiculous. But anyways, but then when it comes to... I don't know, the temple, it's, uh, I feel like it's the Jews in D Jesus's day. When it comes to the temple, they have money changers in there. You know, it's like, oh, you can only walk this far, but let's, let's sell things in the temple, you know? So you have to internalize it to yourself. What sort of things do I make a mountain out of a molehill? And what mountains do I turn into, you know? the vice versa, you know, these little things that I be like, this is how I'm going to judge my spirituality. And then these really important things, it's like, yeah, I can, you can do that later. It's no big deal. So anyways, always internalize. That's what we got to do. Today is the ninth. All right. And here's a prayer from the Mozarabic Missal. Um, Bright, O Lord, is the heavenly ray by whose unwanted light brought to us through the resurrection of thy son, the horror of the perpetual night is shattered. We bear witness to the glory of thy mighty works, for thou didst make the day of things that pass radiant with a light which is eternal. Do thou, therefore, almighty God, Father of our Lord, Receive in thine unmoved serenity the supplications that rise to heaven from thy praying people. Strengthen us, grant us the gifts of hope. To them that make offering, give thou peace. And to them that are dead, give the quiet of eternal rest. Alright, see you later.